as above, so below. Cooper, our hero, has been severed from his agency. What about the terrain he moves across? Will it too be reversed and subverted? Firewalk with me answers this question in several ways. The town of Twin Peaks is reimagined as the bleak, crummy deer meadow, with a sheriff's office that looks more like a shabby home. You want to hear about our specials? A broken down diner that proudly displays its lack of amenities. We don't have any. And a trailer park in lieu of a luxurious hotel. Even the weather has changed. Gone is the pilot's omnipresent fog, although the sunny skies only emphasize our befuddlement. Nothing about Deer Meadow is comforting. Don't go in there further with it. There's nothing good about it. Yet whatever lies beneath its flimsy surfaces may be even more threatening. Thank you, Jack. We can sense why characters would trap themselves here, fearing what's even worse. See, I've already gone places. I just want to stay where I am. It's point made, Firewalk With Me finally restores the familiar sights of the actual Twin Peaks, with its middle-class comfort replacing Deer Meadow's poverty and corruption. And then the film shows us something even more horrible than the superficial ugliness of Deer Meadow. The charm and beauty of Twin Peaks mean absolutely nothing to Laura Palmer. She slides helplessly across the shiny facade of this indifferent environment, passing through its people as if she's already a ghost. Rejecting both Deer Meadow and Twin Peaks, the film finally settles on its true location. This would look nice on your wall. The shadow self of this external reality. The man behind the mask is looking for the book with the pages torn out. He is going toward the hiding place. What fans of the show will recognize as the Black Lodge. He is under the fan now. It's no longer confined to the woods or occasional nighttime visitations. It spills out into the sunlight, and Laura isn't safe anywhere. For whatever reason, the phrase Black Lodge never appears in Firewalks, and the word Lodge is spoken only once. The good Dale is in the Lodge, and he can't leave. Write it in your diary. Directly referring to the events of the finale. Is this because the characters themselves don't know the Lodge legends, or because Lynch does not like the Black-White Lodge terminology? Either way, the spirit world of Firewalk with me remains uncanny and unnamed, except for one location. Is above a convenience store. This calls back to the one-armed man's clues in the first season. Convenience store. Starting with the European version of the pilot. We lived above it. Which birthed all of these images. I mean it like it is. Like it sounds. We haven't seen Philip Gerard since the Laura mystery ended. But now he returns, along with other forgotten Lynch icons like the Tremonts, renamed the Chalfonts, and the Creamed Corn, renamed Garmin Bosia. The Little Man, the Red Room, and Bob, all restored at the end of the series, are also present. Only the giant has disappeared. The path between the spirit and human world goes both ways. Firewalk with me suggests possession as partnership rather than puppetry and the spooky owls are replaced by intangible electricity as the vehicle of these spirits. Just as we can command, but not entirely control, the flow of electricity, are you? so the people of Twin Peaks subconsciously summon the supernatural forces that surround them. The Tremonts, the open door, Mike, the ring, excuse me, honey, and Bob himself are all triggered by particular psychological events. Come on! That red will be torn! 
Their appearances, in turn, trigger key realizations. I thought I saw you. And decisions for the human characters. Oh, God, you know, I did stop home on Friday, come to think of it. I had this severe headache, and I was in the neighborhood, so I darted in and out of the house to get some aspirin. Where were you, Laura? I didn't see you. Fire Walk With Me demolishes the show's attempts to cleave the good Leland from the bad Bob. Um, I was just down the street. <laughs> the murder of Teresa arises from Leland's own sordid affair with a prostitute. Soon. His fear of blackmail. And next time, let's party with those girlfriends you told me about. And his shame over his own daughter's sexuality. His harassment of Leroy, Laura feels less like a demonic ghoul. Leave her alone. Don't do that. She doesn't like me. More like an abusive father. How do you know what she likes? And when Laura is raped by Bob and asks who he really is, she discovers the fact she's been trying to hide since she was 12 years old. I always thought you knew it was me. But Bob is also real. Because evil is real and much bigger than just Leland. He says he wants to be me or he'll kill me. It threatens to swallow up Lara too. But there is more to Twin Peaks spirit world than Bob. Do you know who I am? The relationship between Philip Gerard, the spirit Mike, and the little man from another place is one of the most confusing elements in Twin Peaks. Does Mike crusade against Bob for selfish or noble reasons? Is the little man an ally of Bob or his enemy? Is the little man merely an aspect of Mike? I am the arm. Or his true face? On the series, Mike claims that he removed his arm to rid himself of evil. But was this division, like all other divisions in Twin Peaks, a mistake? The answers to many of these questions remain uncertain. But for the sake of clarity, we will refer to the little man as Mike, given his link to Philip Gerard and his role as the primary counterbalance to Bob in this film. Throughout Fire Walk With Me, for whatever reason, Mike is on Laura's side. As both the little man and Philip Gerard, he plays an upsetting but necessary role, as do the Tremonts guiding her to a deeper understanding of her predicament and the possibilities beyond it. When presenting Teresa's ring to Laura, Mike helps her in numerous ways. Mike is unifying Laura's fragmented world, since the ring appears to her when she is daughter, prostitute, and visionary. Mike is also offering Laura a metaphysical marriage proposal, wedding her either to himself or maybe even to the good Cooper in the lodge. He's crying out for help. Leave us alone! God damn it, get back to your work! By establishing a link between Laura's father and Teresa's death, Mike is also shattering Bob's web of secrecy. For this reason, and because Twin Peaks has already established rings as totems of trauma, Mike is also encouraging Laura to recognize Leland as her abuser. This knowledge is powerful. Teresa's arm went completely dead. Notice that both Teresa's and Laura's left arms are numb, only when we don't see the ring. This knowledge is also painful. The mythology of Firewalk With Me revisits Lynch's own creations and develops new ideas. Although it never openly acknowledges Mark Frost's contributions to the series, it does not altogether abandon them. Theosophical concepts of the Dogpa, the Lodges, and the Dweller on the Threshold evolve into something more organic and subtle. Leland's subconscious ability to call upon Bob, a slippery struggle between personified energies, both positive and negative, and Laura's recognition of Bob within herself. Fire. Walk. Unlike Cooper, who cannot face his shadow self, Laura cannot see past her own. When this kind of fire starts, it is very hard to put out. The tender boughs of innocence burn first, and the wind rises, 
And then all goodness is in jeopardy. Theosophy was Frost's interest, probably not Lynch's. Yet its themes continue to play out in Firewalk with me, not only because of the narrative momentum that Frost established, but because of significant overlap with Lynch's own spiritual beliefs. Lynch himself articulates a worldview expressed most purely in the mystical texts of the Upanishads. Lynch very much believes in the different levels of reality that he presents in his work. The cracked facade of orderly everyday appearance, the chaotic energies that animate this surface, and finally the boundless self transcending physical death. The individual soul is a drop of water that can be reabsorbed into the ocean of consciousness. And this question will go on and on until the final answer comes. Then the knowing is so full, there is no room for questions. But we are not there yet, and neither is Laura.